in according to the indian time uh, he is a very good uh, researcher and currently he is the principal investigator researcher in nrg material laboratory korean institute of energy research as well as he is serving as a professor post in university of science and technology republic of korea he did his phd from post tech uh, republic of korea then he moved to uh, stanford university usa for a couple of years as a post doctor and then around 2012 i think he has joined as a senior research in kair korean institute of uh, energy research where he is now the principal investigator researcher and also uh, from 2014 he have joined in university of uh, science and technology republic of korea as a lecturer now he is the professor there he have uh, many uh, publications in international reputation more than 100 publications he have very good scopus reading as well as he have uh, uh, received many awards uh, outstanding research awards from republic of korea government of uh, south korea as well as some other uh, organizations and he have uh, uh, under him there are many research scholars have taken a phd he is also uh, guiding more uh, fellows in his uh, laboratory he have mainly uh, uh, did mainly uh, uh, taken the research in the field of material science that include synthesis and as well as investigation of metal organic framework particularly for the inclusion gas absorption separation and nowadays also he is taking keen interest in uh, especially in material sciences which includes conducting materials and uh, nanomaterials and so on so with that very short description obviously uh, the description or the definition of uh, dr hyunuk kim is nothing is uh, complete because he have very vast area to speak really so with a very little introduction i will now hand over to Dr. Hyunuk Kim is a speaker of this session. So Kim, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are clearly audible, sir. Okay. Um. Can you hear me? Yeah. Now it's your. Okay. Okay, thank you for kind introduction. It is uh, my honor to present my work to uh, you guys. And um, yeah, this is the first time to do this kind of webinar. Uh, my name is Hyunwoo Kim, working at Korea Institute of Energy Research. My institute is uh, one of our national laboratory in Korea. It's government national laboratory uh, about uh, design and application. Uh, frameworks. Okay. Uh, porous material can be divided into three categories: inorganic porous material, metal organic frameworks, and organic porous materials. Uh, inorganic porous material they don't have carbon, only have al aluminum, silicon, and oxygen. And representative uh, material zeolite and major porous silica, assembled by non-covalent interactions. And they don't have a uh, metal, and they have carbons and nitrogen, and oxygen. And metal organic framework is a hybrid material from metal ions, organic ligand. Uh, most of all, metal organic framework have a uh, two below uh, two nanometer pole below two nanometer poles and have high surface area. Okay, let me introduce how to synthesize these materials. MOF can be prepared by metal ions organic ligand in the presence of organic solvent. So depending on organic uh, ligand and metal ions, we can design various uh, framework and structures. And the pore size and shape and chemical environment can be tunable depending on the organic ligand. And this material have very high surface area compared to geolite. Geolite has a uh, 500 meter square meter a meter square per gram, but this material has a uh, more than thousand surface area meter square per gram surface area. Uh, representative material MOF5 
has a BT surface area 3,800 meters cube per gram. So it's uh, seven times higher than geolite surface area. And this, uh, this material have a uh, uh, good summer and chemical stability in gas storage separation and uh, catalysis. And uh, there are many uh, applications using these materials. At early stage, uh, ion exchange catalysis and gas storage and separation has been uh, reported. But recently, uh, FIFO explored new area in sensor, drug delivery, and PM filter, and thermal electronic and support capacitors. Uh, in Kia, I also study uh, the uh, the battery application using these materials. Uh, Ronald Lobson at University of Melbourne first design and construction of uh, MOF materials. He simply mixed mix the copper ions and one pour uh, di uh, dicyanobenzene, and he was able to design adamantane uh, structures. Most of the chemists believe the Donald Lobson is the first chemist to uh, suggest this kind of uh, the design of MOF. Later on, many chemists uh, uh, study this uh, material the top line, the key player in US, and middle line is uh, the chemist from the European country. Bottom line is a uh, chemist from Asian country. In US, uh, uh, Omar Yagi at Jeffron and Dinka is a uh, leading chemist. And in European country, Gerard Ferre, Christian Sirer are uh, the wealth known chemist. In Asian country, Susumu Kitagawa and Hiroshi Gitagawa is a uh, well-known uh, chemistry. Nowadays, uh, many people are uh, uh, start to uh, explore new application and, and structures. There are various uh, synthetic methods to prepare this material. And 70% of product prepared by sorbothermal reaction. And sorbothermal reaction is uh, just simple, simply we mixing organ ligand and metal salt in high solvent, high boiling solvent system and heating. If we heating the uh, these two components, they are just self assemble and give a uh, crystalline product. And microwave reaction is a quick method. Uh, use microwave uh, so we can easily prepare uh, MOF within a couple of uh, minutes, within one hour. And so on chemical method we use intense ultrasound radiation between 20 kilohertz to and the 10 megahertz to generate homogeneous nucleation. So if we use the sonochemical method, prove sonicator, increase temperature, and give uh, the MOF crystals. And diffusion method is just use a two solvent system to synthesize MOF at the interface, interface of two solution. And mechanochemical is a solvent-free method, uh, just mixing uh, ligand, organic ligand, and metal ions to produce MOF. And electrochemical use oxidation of electrode, so without any adding the metal salt, just use uh, electrode oxidation to uh, synthesize MOF. Here I uh, uh, show the general method to prepare the MOF. So for initially, we are mixing metal salt and organic ligand in the presence of dimethyl forum amide or diethyl forum amide or water or ethanol. And mixing two uh, components in this solvent and make homogeneous solution and adding this solution to a seal tube or bomb reactor and increase temperature up to 100 degree or 110 degree to get a crystalline product. And diffusion method, diffusion way is just mixing two solution. We initially adding the metal solution in the bottom, and uh, we are layering a uh, ligand solution above this uh, metal solution and grow the crystal interface between the solution. And paper method, paper diffusion method is used just mixing the two uh, uh, component in the organic solvent and do paper diffusion of the anti-solvent and to crystallize 
uh, the MOFs. So most of the MOF produced by thermal uh, reaction because MOF is more a thermal dynamic product. So if we increase uh, temperature, then we easily can prepare a sta thermally stable product. And we, as I uh, showed you before, the, we also use microwave method or sonochemical method. These are very simple, quick method to prepare MOF. So if we use uh, to uh, this method, we can uh, quickly, within one hour, we can uh, get the uh, very homogeneous crystal. Mechanochemical method is uh, also an important method in industry. Uh, if we use the solvent, the, the cost is expensive. So if, without solvent, we are just, just adding the metal salt and organic ligand and grinding to grow the crystal. So if we can, if we, we use uh, these two components, uh, we can uh, get the uh, high crystalline product. And here I uh, show synthetic mechanism of MOF, how we can grow the uh, MOF. So just adding, as I talked to you, adding the metal salt and the organic ligand in the presence of the solvent. And if we adding the metal sol sol salt in the presence of DMF, DMF is a major solvent. So DMF coordinates the metal and make this kind of a zinc uh, cluster. And the, if when they have a uh, ligand, this kind of benzene uh, dicarboxyl acid, this uh, dicarboxyl acid coordinates the metal and making seeding of the crystal. And cr depending on the time, then uh, crystals grow and make a, a bigger crystal. So in, in this mechanism, controlling factor is solvent, temperature, and time, and pH. So uh, here is a pH, not the pH what we are talking in the water, because uh, this pH is a pH is typically is, 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 is defined in the aqueous solvent, but here uh, is uh, just apparent pH in the aqueous uh, the this organic solvent. So if we can control these factors, we can grow the different types of MOFs. Here I uh, show the uh, one of the stable MOF with large surface area. So before Omar Yagi report MOF5 structure, most of MOF is uh, uh, quite unstable after removal of the solvent. But Omar Yagi, this MOF5 is uh, highly stable when they remove the uh, solvent molecule. So just uh, mixing zinc nitrate and terapeutic acid in the presence of DM, DEF, diethylforum amide, it gives MOA5, this kind of struct, network structure. It accommodates DEF in the pore. So we if we can, if we uh, eliminate the DEF solvent, we can make a porous network. So when, when we measure the BT uh, uh, gas adsorption experiment, we are adding nitrogen gases to estimate the surface area. So as you see here, this material have BT type one isosome. That means it has a uh, the na nanometer pore size. This is a uh, 1.5 nanometer pore and 1.1 nanometer pore both pores. And surface area is a 3,800 meters per gram. And the citation number is uh, over uh, 6,000 times cited. So uh, this is a uh, one of the important paper in this area. So when he, uh, Omar Yagi changed the ligand to ben, uh, this kind of benzene dicarboxyl acid to naphthalene dicarboxyl acid or biphenyl dicarboxyl acid or longer linker, he was able to extending the pore size two nanometer to three nanometer. So this is uh, isolatecular, the chemistry the having same topology, but when he changed the ligand, he was able to get the uh, increase the pore size. But uh, when we uh, increase the pore size, sometimes this kind of interplanetary structure can be formed. So uh, if they have interplanetary structure, means they have another the framework can be occupied in the pore. So if they have this kind of interplanetary structure, they decrease, uh, this one has a lower surface area than initial MOF5. But uh, 
what I uh, found is when we uh, prepared interparent relation to the structure, it can be useful for other applications. But the interparent structure is always give impurity. But when I add in organic bases, such as melamine or aniline, we were able to synthesize phase pure interparent rate structure. So as you see, this powered XLD data, this is MOA5 XLD pattern, but it, it, uh, interparent uh, rate the MOA5 XLD pattern is a little bit different. And when we adding this organic basis, we were able to pretty, uh, synthesize pure interparent MOA5 structures. Uh, so when we have interparent structure, surface area is uh, much is, uh, lower than MOA5, but it has higher hydrogen uptake at uh, 7, 7 Kelvin and 1 bar. So if we use this kind of material, we can increase hydrogen storage capacity. So nowadays, uh, people are interested in fuel cell, hydrogen fuel cell car. So if we want to, uh, to use hydro, uh, 400 kilometer using this hydrogen fuel cell car, need four kilograms of hydrogen. So if you want to store four kilograms of hydrogen, need a high uh, volume of the tank. But if we use this kind of MOF material, we can decrease the uh, volume of these uh, hydrogens. So we can carry more hydrogen uh, uh, in, the, in the car. So this is a current hydrogen storage material in MOFs. So US Department of Energy uh, uh, suggested a commercial uh, the target, the hydrogen storage material, like this lead line, a six weight percent by 2025. But the, uh, some of MOF showed uh, above this DOE target. But uh, unfortunately, DOE goal is a room temperature target. Most of the MOF uh, showed high uh, hydrogen storage at 77 Kelvin liquid nitrogen temperature. So it's uh, the goal in this area to increase hydrogen storage capacity is uh, room temperature. Uh, so if any material can show high hydrogen capacity at room temperature, it can be uh, commercialized. The MOF uh, also have uh, unique applications by post modification. For, for example, when we make MOF with metal ions organic ligand, the metal ions can be exchanged with other metals, for example, titanium, vanadium, and chromium, and manganese ion. So when we adding MOA5 crystal, is MOA5 has zinc as a metal. So when we adding MOA5 crystal to uh, the, the titanium or vanadium or chromium solution, uh, the zinc exchange with other metals and, uh, and they change the color. So without initially adding this kind of a, a metal, we can post, after making MOA5, we can exchange, we can doping uh, other metals to MOA5. Another interesting uh, observation is when we having amino functionalized uh, MOF, IRMO3 has amino group. So if they have amino group, we can attach this kind of aliphatic chain to MOF material. So if you adding aliphatic chain, this uh, MOF ligand, then it's become a hydrophobic. So uh, Seth Cohen reported this kind of uh, post setting modification. As you see here, when they uh, do attach hydrophobic tail, then contact angle is increased. So they can able to make a super hydrophobic surface of MOF. And another interesting uh, thing is uh, the, this material can be uh, tuned by core shell structure. So when we adding two ligand with a uh, metal salt, the two ligand, uh, this kind of amino group and terephthal acid randomly mixed in one crystal. But uh, after making MOA5 crystal first, and then if 
adding this crystal another MOF precursor solution, the another MOF is grow above this MOF5. So it can make core shell structure. And if we adding second core the structure, if we add another solvent, then make triple core the uh, crystal can be grow. So this kind of uh, crystal engineering also possible using this kind of material. And some MOF has a uh, very dynamic properties. For example, if this uh, MOF having a pedal wheel structure, if you see this core, uh, the cluster unit is like a bicycle pedal. So people call pedal wheel structure. Uh, this two metal connected with a uh, ligand and make a two dimensional grid structure. And above this metal have a pillar ligand. So depending on the pillar ligand, it has a different pore size. So if they adding dark core as a pillar, they have some dynamic property. So when they adding, when they have dark core as a uh, as pillar, when they have DMF in the pore, the volume is shrinked, like and structure is changed like this one. And when they adding benzene to this zinc PDC dark core MOF then it's become a tilted and change the volume. So depending on the solvent condition, the structure is having dynamic properties. And uh, MOA5 also have dynamic property. When we adding ferrocene to this uh, MOF, then it's become a tilted structure and accommodate uh, ferrocene in the pore. And this material also have interesting pressure dependent gate opening behavior. Uh, this copper BF bipyridine uh, structure have a two dimensional uh, layered structure. Uh, this 2D layered structure, uh, unique pressure dependent gate opening property. So when they adding CO2 to this material, as you see above uh, 250 tor, it start to absorb a CO2 and they have a bracing uh, property. So people call pressure dependent gate opening. So when they accommodate pressure, uh, the CO2, then its volume is increasing. So uh, it has a very interesting structure, uh, dynamic structure or changes triggered by uh, CO2 absorption. And the, uh, among the MOF material, one of the highest surface area is uh, DUT60. So they are uh, use uh, zinc and this uh, two ligand, mixed ligand, were able to grow this kind of uh, high surface area uh, MOF material. The surface area, so this is uh, 70,100 uh, 70, uh, uh, surface area. This is world record surface area among these uh, uh, materials. And uh, depending on the organic ligand, we can extend the pore size. For example, if we use uh, this kind of 2,5 uh, uh, dihydroxybenzene, we can make uh, this kind of uh, one nanometer pore size. But if we extend uh, organ ligand, if we change the organ ligand, we can extend the pore window to uh, uh, 8 nanometer. So if we have high wide opening of the material, we can see these openings by TEM analysis. As you see here, the MOF have a unique pore uh, by observed by TEM analysis. But if we increase this kind of, uh, it's quite uh, difficult to synthesize this kind of organic ligand. And if we use this kind of rank C organic ligand, it's, uh, it's not well soluble in, in certain organic solvents. So that is a disadvantage of the, this material. And interestingly, MOF have open metal site, loose acidic site. Some MOF have uh, the solvent uh, molecule in the pore. So if we can eliminate the solvent, we can make loose acidic site. So this loose acidic site is, is very useful for catalysis gas storage and the hydrogen storage and the uh, post modification and many other areas. So recently uh, people are 
are concerned about the global warming by uh, CO2 emission. The largest CO2 emission is from the uh, USA. And the uh, uh, most of CO2 emission from the power station, 20% is uh, CO2 emitted from power station, especially coal power plant. So we need to capture CO2 from the power station. So uh, the, the MOF is very high surface area, so it can useful for accommodate uh, CO2. So if uh, this is a CO2 capture using MOF 177, and compared to geolite, this MOF have high CO2 uptake at high pressure. As you see here, if there is one cylinder, if you occupy adding carbon, it same the, the storage stored uh, CO2 capacity is same as four cylinder. But if we use MOF, then we can increase our storage capacity. So it's, it's useful for CO2 storage. But the uh, if we want to capture CO2 from power uh, coal power station, the partial pressure of the uh, from the power station is 0.1 bar. So it's, it's, it's important to store, capture CO2 from this pressure. So among the older uh, uh, porous material, MOF74 show the highest CO2 uptake at this pressure. So how they can accommodate high CO2 uptake at low pressure? Because they have open metal site, unsaturated metal site. So if they have loose acidic site, CO2 can bound to this uh, metal site. So it can have high affinity CO2 at low pressure. This is a heat award option. So among other material, this one showed the highest uh, the CO2 enthalpy value. So uh, I actually uh, synthesized MOF74 uh, in my group. So when we synthesize MOF74 in the presence of ethylene gly glycol, this ethylene glycol uh, uh, is occupying the pore and it's make uh, this kind of OH cluster in the pore. So when they have this kind of OH cluster in the pore, this MOF74 is show very high crystallinity compared to a uh, uh, known MOF74. And it, it give high crystals. Uh, and so when we uh, eliminate ethylene glycol and we were able to get high surface area of the MOF74, as you see here, uh, previously reported uh, this material has uh, this surface area. But when we use our method uh, in the presence using the ethylene glycol, it gives much higher surface area. And use this kind of high surface area material, we uh, uh, did a gas CO2 and CO capture experiment. So if, we, as you see here, magnesium, when we did a gas adsorption at room temperature, magnesium show very high CO2 uptake, and, and then CO uptake is low, and then methane, nitrogen, hydrogen is not observed. In the case of cobalt, it show high CO2 uptake and CO uptake, but not other gases. And cobalt also, uh, nickel also showed high CO2 and CO uptake at low pressure. So if you see in the case of a CO2 uptake room temperature, uh, in the case of uh, the magnesium is show the highest affinity and show the high uptake at low pressure, and then nickel and cobalt. In the case of a, a carbon monoxide, uh, nickel cobalt show the highest uh, CO2 uptake at low pressure, and magnesium is low uptake. So as I summarize here, so CO2 affinity is uh, CO2 affinity is magnesium highest and nickel and cobalt, and CO affinity is uh, uh, nickel, cobalt, and magnesium. So when we uh, use the mixture gas separation using this material, we did a, a breakthrough experiment using uh, the column chromatography. So we adding uh, these three uh, material in the column and 
try to separate CO2 and CO gases. As you see here, in the case of magnesium, it showed the highest uh, CO2 uptake and no weak CO uptake. So as you see here, uh, they have a high retention time. So they have CO2 high CO2 uptake. That's why they don't have a CO2 emission. And then it emits CO first and then CO2 later. And case, in the case of cobalt and nickel, it have opposite behavior. So depending on the metal species, it gives different affinity to CO2 and CO. So we try to find how this material captures CO2 and CO. So we did a synchrotron experiment to determine the CO2 absorption site. We add one single crystal and add the CO gases in the seal tube and did a synchrotron experiment to determine the gas absorption site. As you see here, magnesium, cobalt, and nickel showed uh, two CO2 absorption sites, site A and site B. And one of the interesting observations is in the case of magnesium, uh, even if they have a big, bigger atomic atom size, it has a much shorter uh, bond distance, magnesium and co uh, CO2. So that means uh, magnesium shows the highest affinity to CO2 than the uh, cobalt and nickel. Another interesting point is uh, when we did the CO absorption site, uh, nickel, uh, cobalt, and nickel case, the bond distance cobalt and nickel is much uh, shorter than magnesium. Magnesium and CO uh, bond distance is uh, 2.4, but cobalt and uh, cobalt and nickel is 2.1. So in the case of magnesium, it has a very weak interaction with CO. So if we can uh, control the metal species, we can uh, do gas separation, CO2 and CO separation. So why the uh, transition metal cobalt and nickel show highest affinity to CO? that we did a DFT analysis. Uh, the D orbital of transition metal can do pi back donating bond with CO. So it, make, it made a very strong uh, interactions. But in the case of magnesium, they don't have a D orbital. They only have S orbital. So they have a weak interactions with a carbon monoxide. And uh, people also interested in CO2 capture from the air, but is uh, uh, CO2 concentration in air is atmosphere is very low. So if you want to capture CO2 from the uh, air, need high affinity. So the, uh, some MOF uh, showed very high affinity uh, to CO2 at air. For example, this kind of copper silicon hexafluoride and this uh, uh, ligand show this kind of uh, uh, MOF structure. In the pore, the fluoride uh, uh, directing to the pore, it make a very hydrophilic pore in the pore. In, in, in the pore. So this material at low uh, uh, gas pressure area, it show very high uh, CO2 uptake compared to other material. It has electrostatic interaction with CO2. And so in room temperature, uh, is air atmosphere, it can uh, accommodate CO2. So another interesting application using this material is a PM filters. Uh, Bo Wang, Professor Bo Wang in the uh, Beijing University, he uh, used MOF as a filter to remove the PM. And as you see here, he put the MOF filter and between the two component and, and make uh, uh, the smoke here. And when they have a MOF filter, then this uh, through this filter, it we can see the clean uh the uh the air and how we can make moe filter he used adding mof with a polymer fiber 
And uh, using this MOF uh, in the polymer fiber have uh, the electrostatic interaction, interaction with air pollutant and captured air pollutant. So using this kind of uh, MOF filter, he was able to eliminate uh, PM uh, removal. And some MOF have uh, unsaturated metal Lewis acidic site. So it used for uh, removal toxic gases and uh, uh, VOC2. So he uh, demonstrated coating uh, using this kind of uh, method. He was able to coating mask or something like that. So he can remove the, some pollutant. And Omar Yagi, he, uh, Omar Yagi, Professor Omar Yagi, he uh, uh, reported uh, geolite type MOF structures. The geolite have a silicon, oxygen silicon component and have 144 angles. And imidazole, as you see here, imidazole itself, when they bound to the uh, coordinate to the metal, it have 145 angles. So this angle is like a geolite angle. So if we use uh, imidazole, we can make a uh, geolite type MOF structures. So using this imidazole, he synthesized various uh, M uh, geolite type uh, MOF structures. Uh, GIF-8 is a wonderful representative of his material. He used the zinc uh, nitrate and the uh, uh, two metal imidazole to make GIF-8 uh, structure. The GIF-8 itself had a very small pore, around four nanometer pore, but it showed very high uh, stability in uh, organic or uh, aqueous solvent. So as you see here, most of the MOF is rather unstable in the water in water solvent, but in this GIF-8 showed a very high stability in boiling water and boiling uh, benzene and methanol and even in uh, NaOH con condition. So it is very useful in many applications. And this one has a, a 38, uh, 1300 meters cube per, per gram surface area. And GIF-8, uh, when we carbonize GIF-8, the above uh, 800 degree, the zinc evaporating and make a nanoporous carbon. And the same isostructure GIF-67 is the same as, the structure is same as GIF-8, but it has cobalt ion instead of zinc. So if we inc uh, carbonize this one, we can, uh, make graphitic carbon structures. Uh, cobalt, we cannot remove the cobalt. Cobalt is work as a catalysis to make a graphitic carbon. So if we can make core shell structure, for example, if we have a GIF-8 uh, crystal and adding GIF-8 crystal to a GIF-67 solution, we can grow uh, GIF-8 called uh, GIF-67 and after making core shell uh, structure, if we carbonize this one in at 800 nitrogen condition, we can make a, a nanoporous carbon. Inside, it has a nanoporous carbon. Outside, it has graphite carbon. So this one, this one is very useful for battery application. So as you see here, EDX uh, mapping experiment. So inside, they have a zinc. Outside they have cobalt uh, GIF-67. So we can distinguish core shell structures. And from the TEM analysis, he were able to characterize nanoporous carbon and graphite carbons. And using this uh, uh, carbon material, he used a supercapacitor electrode. For example, uh, this kind of supercapacitor, uh, this kind of uh, nanoporous carbon, show very high uh, supercapacitor capacitance is uh, around uh, uh, 400, uh, 200 Faraday per gram. Typically activate carbon has 100 Faraday per gram, but this one showed the two times higher uh, uh, capacitance. And the uh, detention, as you see here, is after cycle experiment, they demonstrated uh, 10,000 uh, times uh, cyclic experiment is uh, 
show the very high stability of this uh, material. And recently, uh, Omar Yagi group also reported the water harvesting using this kind of material. As I uh, talked to you, most of MOF is rather unstable in the uh, water condition. The MOF uh, is hydrolyzed in water uh, solvent, but when we use a zirconium type M oxophilic MOF, uh, some of MOF zirconium type oxophilic MOF is highly stable in aqueous uh, solvent. So this kind of zir uh, zirconium type MOF uh, can accommodate water a lot. So as you see here, this one showed uh, at this pressure pressure, it accommodate uh, 0.2 or 0.3 kilogram per kilogram of water. So if if they use if we use this kind of MOF, we can accommodate uh, water from the air. So it is very useful use water collection in desert area. So they made this kind of devices to collect water from the uh, uh, desert low humidity area. So this uh, demonstrate they demonstrated they were uh, this device is capable of harvesting 2.8 liter of water collection per uh, kilograms of water daily. So this one is very useful material to collect water. And uh, Ronald Fisher group uh, reported a couple of uh, nano crystal synthesis using MOF. So he used MOF5 as a template. He adding this kind of uh, palladium or gold precursor in the pore and reduce this uh, metal precursor by hydrogen and grow a uh, nanoparticle in MOF uh, pore. So uh, when People just simply uh, try to grow nano crystal. It aggregates and become a micro crystal, micro crystal. But if we use the MOF as template, uh, uh, we can able to grow nano crystalline product of palladium, gold, or even a silver nanoparticles. So, so particle size around one to three nanometer. And uh, this, as you see, TEM analysis we can see the uh, nanometer uh, crystalline pro uh, nanoparticles. And the, uh, recently, uh, many people uh, studied the conductive MOF. Uh, most of MOF is uh, non-conductive, and it's uh, quite uh, difficult to make a uh, conductive MOF because uh, needed to uh, synthesize new types of organ ligands. And Professor Dinka, he is in uh, MIT. He designed this kind of uh, uh, nickel uh, HITP organ ligand. When he used this kind of uh, HITP uh, triphenylene based ligand, uh, he, he just can grow two dimensional uh, uh, graffiti MOF structure with nickel. So if we can make this kind of uh, two dimensional structure, they have a stacking like this one. And, and have a, a pore like this one, it accommodate electrolyte. So this material have high electrical conductivity. It's a nickel HITP, has a 5,000 5, Siemens per meter. It has a much higher uh, conductivity than uh, graphite and activate carbon. It has a surface area around the 600 meters per gram. So as you, as you see here, among the all the, uh, uh, the porous material, it show very high uh, uh, capacitance in the supercapacitor. And over the uh, 500, 5,000 cycles, uh, storage and uh, charging and discharging experiment, it shows very high uh, stable capacitance. And the uh, uh, MOF is commercially available. Uh, the at the moment is uh, quite expensive. BASF is a BASF German company. Daily produce this kind of MOF is so 100 kilograms. Nowadays it's quite uh, expensive. As you see here, MIL 53, HKUST1, GIF8 is a uh, uh, 
10 gram is uh, around the $200, but uh, Geolite is very cheap. One ton is uh, seven, uh, seven, seventy dollars so it's much cheaper than the uh, uh, the the MOF. But the many chemists uh, studied uh, to decrease the, the price. So uh, I I think is uh, in the future the price will be going to down. So have uh, many applications. So it's it's going to be a uh, uh, it's an uh, important material in in many areas uh, application area. Thank you for uh, the listening. Uh, that's all I prepared. Do you have any questions? So if anyone have any questions, uh, you can raise or you can write in the box. So I can convey to the speaker. If you have any questions related to Okay, just I have a few queries, not exactly questions. Uh, you have uh, mentioned that uh, some certain kind of solvent uh, are required during the hydrothermal synthesis or inclusion synthesis of MOF. So, yeah. major role of this uh, solvent definitely to create the pores and make the pores stable, I guess. Yeah. But if I consider a specificity about the solvent, for example, if I take DMF, dimethyl glyo uh, formaldehyde or diethyl formaldehyde to prepare certain types of MOF. What usually is found that for the DMF it synthesized well, but for DME or diethyl formaldehyde maybe it's going to some different structure or maybe some uh, different uh, type of material or may not be at all crystalline. So why this smaller change in the solvent? certain time creates a lot of difference in the crystallinity or maybe in the form of a particular structure. Yeah, okay. Uh, one important factor is the size of the solvent. So DEF is a lot bigger than DMF. So uh, if you want to make a lot of bigger pore size, then a uh, lot of big solvent might be uh, proper, the suitable. So diethyl forum amide is good for uh, MOA5, the synthesis, but the D DMF, di dimethyl forum amide is smaller size. So that's useful for make interplanetary framework. So size of the solvent is quite important. And the, uh, yeah, it's try and error, depending on the solvent, it gives different uh, topology. And does the basicity, if I consider some other solvent, maybe it could be acidic. So basicity of uh, the solvent could also play a role? Yes, yes, that also important factors. The Depending mm -hmm. on the, uh, the solvent, the it have different basicity. So that's affecting deprotonation of uh, the uh, carboxyl acid. So when we use synthesize MOF, uh, the most of the ligand is based having dicarboxyl acid. So dicarboxyl acid need requires the deprotonation to coordinate the metal. So if we use uh, the amide, photo amide, it useful for deprotonation of dicarboxyl acid. It give uh, the MOF structure. But when we make a uh, geolite type MOF, we need a based one, we use the uh, Methanol is possible to make uh, the MOF based on the uh, methanol or some ethanol because uh, easy to uh, deprotonate this uh, imidazole. Okay, and just I have another uh, small queries about your conducting materials you have mentioned. Uh, in case of the conducting MOF, uh, what found to be much more uh, extensive or I can say extended aromatic rings. For example, HIT, what? Yeah. Right. So, but that needs inclusion of certain uh, ionic component, nice, like electrolyte. But does this extended aromatic component itself plays a role as a conductor? For example, 
its extended pi structure is helping to conduct the electricity or whatever yes if we uh, have a uh, conjugated the uh, uh, the ligand is 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 having a uh, uh, high uh, conduction electric conduction and also this uh, triphenyl line has a, a planar geometry and if they have a planar geometry with nickel it make a two dimensional uh, uh, structures and this two dimensional structure is useful for electro electric electron conduction and the uh, so if they have a pi stacking with axial position is uh, uh, actually it's not good for the electric conductivity so for example the graphene is more highly conductive than graphite so graphene is a one thing one or two few layers of thin film so compared to graphite uh, graphene is more more highly conductive that's the same the phenomenon yeah that's right another things that i can say that these materials could be a one dimensional conducting because the pores are lying in one direction if it is stacked yeah but if i consider a three dimensional uh, conductivity or maybe if i uh, try to extend it to at least two dimensional then what type of modification do you expect okay so uh, making the three dimensional structures right from the right, 2d right. okay so uh, so uh, I think it's uh, it's, uh, it's possible to make a three-dimensional uh, conductive MOF. We are also doing this one, but the uh, the problem is the stability. So if we want to connect two-dimensional layer, then it's having more having uh, having pillar of the ligand. The pillar of the ligand is sometimes is uh, having dynamic motion it decreases this kind of dynamic motion decrease uh, stability of the framework the, if we have low stability then it's uh, quite a difficult to use for super capacitor application it, it's quite a difficult to accommodate electrolytes in the pole of course its pole size is much bigger but its uh, uh, stability is less yeah that's true that's right yeah very good and your work uh, you have mentioned about carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide that's really excellent uh, what i observe but if i come to a much more uh, application side of uh, very specific adsorption of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide uh, in the vicinity of let's say emitted space for example in the vehicles monoxide emission to the environment right or in certain other areas for example in uh... okay so um, actually steel company the the korea steel company use a uh, caucus to reduce ion so yeah. they use uh, see, uh, when they use caucus to reduce uh, ion and make ion and and produce uh, unreacted uh, co and emitted the co2 and nitrogen and hydrogen, the emitted gases. So if they can selectively capture CO and can recycle this CO, then increase the efficiency. And another thing is if they can capture CO2 from the flue gases, then decrease the emission of CO2. So depending on the, uh, the material, uh, it is it's used for CO2 and CO separation yeah that's nice that's nice yeah okay uh, if anybody have uh, any questions since we it's, have a uh, very yeah. uh, tight time so uh, i'll uh, give the email id of our speaker dr yano kim in our box you can directly also email him uh, whenever he will get time definitely he will answer the thing and we jointly let it's time to thank dr yano kim uh, for his nice and productive lectures and also we have found that how the materials of such kind tailored synthesized or engineered materials uh, which have the pores like a geolite but they have a very high selectivity adsorption capacity or different gases different molecules small molecule recognition 
so we have learned a lot of things about the synthetic applications and also how these materials are utilizing in our days in very different sections so let's thank dr kim for his nice presentation thank you very much thank you very much for inviting me <laughs> thank you thank you very much okay now it's time to uh, have uh, we have couple of uh, prepare presentation uh, from different scholars as well as uh, in some uh, students so we have in this session uh, two particular presentation one is from arijit sa he is doing phd in pondicherry uh, university he will talk about the statistical analysis of uh, different uh, po and pn uh, bonded structural geometry and then we have shreyashi jana uh, who is a um, fifth year student in pg college he will talk about non covalency beyond the sharing of electrons so with that i will request arijit shah phd scholar of pondicherry university to carry on his presentation and we will have 5 minutes for the presentation followed by 2 minutes for the discussion session so i will request arijit sir uh, good afternoon everyone uh, am i audible yeah it's fine Uh, hello i am arijit shah from department of chemistry pondicherry university i am working under supervision of dr vinay krishna shah today i am going to present one of our work directionality of phosphorus oxygen oxygen nitrogen bonding in light of geometric character statistical analysis uh in morning our set discussed on nitrogen bonding so for here we want to check that the uh, in in uh, phosphorus oxygen what will be the geometry in crystal structure for that purpose we we did some geometric correction we did some geometric correction here and we we have taken px3 and px4 for the, that purpose and we didn't take px5 and px6 because their xpo uh, xpx will, will be more linear and for that purpose that oxygen uh, can't reach there so uh, in uh, here we did uh, cone correction and we have taken data from ccdc we have taken data from ccdc uh, after that we have did uh, geometric correction cone correction and this is the result for xpo uh, xp uh, x3 po before cone correction we can uh, see Uh, before cone correction uh, we can see that uh, at 160 to 170 is the most highest populated region but after cone correction we can see at 170 to 180 is the highest populated region that means xp x3po prefers uh, linearity here uh, phosphorus oxygen prefers linearity so after that we try to find out when x will be carbon nitrogen or oxygen what will be the uh geo geometry so for that purpose we have taken uh, x is equals to carbon and then x is equals to nitrogen and x is equals to oxygen and we have uh, done this same cone correction or geometry correction then we can see that when x is equals to uh, uh, carbon when x is equals to uh, carbon there it prefers less linearity than x is equals to nitrogen when x is equals to oxygen it prefers more linearity that means when uh, 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 x is equals to more electronegative atom it prefers more linearity than less electronegative atom next here we want to next we want to check for a uh, same thing for xpo uh here before cone correction we can see that uh, And at angle 150 to 160 degree uh, and angle 160 to 170 degree is the most populated region uh, this is this side is the population we have in this graph this side is the population population and this side is the angle this uh, xpo angle so after uh, cone correction 
we can see that angle one uh, uh, one seventy to one eighty is the highest populated region. So same here, uh, we can we want to check when x is equals to oxygen or x is equals to carbon. What will be the uh, uh, geometry? So for that uh, for that reason, we have pl uh, uh, plotted x when x is equals to carbon, x is equals to oxygen. But for x is equals to nitrogen. The uh, heat is very less in CCDC. So here we can see when X is equals to oxygen, it prefers more linearity than X is equals to carbon. That means here also il more electronegative atom prefers linearity. Conclusion: Nicogen bonding prefers to be linear. Means this bonding XPO, this angle prefers to be linear. And the preference for linearity is more for PX3 than PX4. Maybe because for in PX3 more there will be more steric crowding. For that reason, that PX3 will be more linear than PX4. And when the electronegativity of X increases, the linearity of the uh, Hello, hello, sir. Hey, hello. Uh, I, um, my screen is visible. No, no, your screen is not shared. Please share your screen. Oh, oh, oh. sorry, sir. Can you okay. tell me, sir? Sorry, extremely sorry, sir. Uh, now it is visible. Yeah, no, sir? It's visible. Then it's I uh, visible. Then uh, sir, I can start from beginning. No, no, it's okay. Actually, there nothing is visible. No, so the... Okay, you can just show the previous slides and just uh, mention what you have talked about. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is the result for PX3, uh, where it, here you can see that after uh, uh, cone correction or after geometry correction, it prefers linearity. When X is equals to carbon, the linear preference for linearity less than nitrogen, and when X is equals to oxygen, that preference for linearity is more. This side is the angle, and this side is the population for these graphs. And uh, this, this is the result for uh, APX4. Uh, this side is the angle we have plotted, and this side is the population. And here also we can see that after uh, correction at angle 170 to 180 is the most highest populated region. And when that uh, X for X, when electronegativity increases, the population also increases. That means for oxygen at a uh, uh, highest angle, it means more populated than carbon. And for PX4, we didn't get for nitrogen because data for nitrogen is very less in CCDC. So conclusion, nicogen bonding prefers uh, to be linear. And the preference for linearity is more for tri-coordinated phosphorus than tetra-coordinated. It may be because the tetra coordinated is more sterically crowded than tri coordinated. And when that electronegativity of X increases, the preference for linearity also increases. This is the reference. Thank you. OK. If anybody have any questions, it's now open for the discussion. Okay, I just have uh, a query, not yes, exactly uh, question. I can say, please, sir. And since you have uh, talked about that, electro with the increase of electronegativity, you found that linearity is increasing. Yes, sir. Right. right. Now, yes, what sir. about the size effect? If you, uh, if I consider, uh, for example, certain atoms which have a close, uh, maybe 
electronegativity, but, but size are differs or maybe polarizability is differs. How could we expect it about this uh, geometric preference? I'm I'm not giving any data. I'm just uh, taking it hypothetically. If I consider the geometry, keeping the electronegativity constant. Okay, sir. I, Does I got... this linearity will follow or any kind of polarizability effect will uh, make any role? Uh, sir, actually, uh, we didn't check regarding size because their uh, size-wise data is not that much available. So that's why we checked regarding to ele uh, electronegativity. Uh, you can see here that nitrogen is not present, sir, because their data is very less. And that is the reason. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay it's a nice presentation uh, from Arijit. So if you don't have any other question, let's thanks to uh, Arijit and I give a good luck for his PhD. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. okay. Now uh, uh, we have another paper presenter, uh, Sreyesh Yana. She will talk about non-covalency beyond the sharing of electrons. She is the uh, BSc students of PK College. So I will request, may I request Sreyesh Yana to present our lecture. Now it's the written, so there, there will be five minutes for the presentation followed by two minutes for the discussion. So I'll request sharing. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, it's audible. Okay. So, good afternoon, everybody. I am Sreyoshi Jana, fifth semester student of Chemistry Honors from Pre-K College, Kantai. I am now giving uh, an intro introduction about the no covalency beyond the sharing of electrons. Firstly, we come to the point about what is covalent. Co means together, and valence indicates the bonding interaction. Therefore, co covalent bond is the interatomic linkage that results from the sharing of an electron pair between two atoms. Here, binding arises from the electrostatic attraction of their nuclei for the same electrons. Non-covalent interaction is different from covalent bonding interaction in the sense that it does not involve the sharing electrons, but rather involves more dispersed variations of electromagnetic interaction between molecules. The chemical energy released in this case is nearly one to five kilocalories per mole. Now, there is a list for the basic categories of this type of bonding interaction, like inter electrostatic interaction, pi effect interaction, Van der Waals force of attraction, or repulsion interaction. <laughs> then hydrophobic effect, hydrophilic effect, hydrogen bond, halogen bond, or etc. Now, electrostatic interaction is the ionic interaction. This force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the substance interacting. It involves the attraction of ions and molecules with full permanent charges of opposite ions. This can be easily broken up from addition to highly polar solvents like sol water. Here, Gibbs energy release is nearly 5 kJ per mole, and in water, ion pairing is mostly entropy driven. This interaction can be seen also in molecules with a localized charge uh, on particular atom like. Ethoxide ion is more commonly accompanied by the positive charge of an alkali metal ion, like sodium ion. Now, hydrogen bonding. It is a specific type of interaction involves dipole dipole interaction between a partially positively charged hydrogen atom and partially negatively charged, highly electronegative atom like fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, and etc. This is not the covalent bond, bond exactly, but is classified as strong non-covalent interaction. Most commonly interactions of this type uh, releases the energy nearly about 0 to 4 kilocalorie per mole, but sometimes it can be stronger than those and releases nearly 40 to 50 kilocalorie per mole, like in HF, 
according to linear spouling strength of hydrogen bonding is essentially determined by electrostatic charges now it is responsible for liquid state of ammonia or hydrochloric acid or water and here is some examples of hydrogen bonding it's shown now halogen bonding it is a type of non covalent interaction which does not involve the formation of or breaking of actual bonds but rather is similar to dipole dipole interaction known as hydrogen bonding here a halogen bond atom acts as an electrophilic center and forms weak electrostatic interaction with the nucleophilic center like oxygen nitrogen or sulfur or any anionic center it is restricted to monoatomic nucleophiles and differs from halogen aromatic interaction now the van der waals force of attraction it was given by van der waals and the force is inversely proportional to the distance working between two substances and this distance in six power of the distance it is the substrate uh, of electrostatic interaction involving permanent or induced dipoles or multipoles keson force is one of the van der waals forces and this is permanent dipole and dipole interaction this uh, shows the um, examples of this type of forces and now d by force this is also under van der waals forces and this is dipole and induced dipole interaction here the electrons of non polar molecule become polarized towards or away from the dipole of the approaching molecule atoms having larger atomic radii are considered more polarizable and experience greater attractions as a result of dy force here this is the example of dy force now london dispersive force this is also under the van der waals force and this is induced dipole and induced dipole interaction the weakest type of non covalent interaction here to be notified that hydrogen and halogen bonding are not classified as van der waals forces now the pi effect which is actually the associated uh, with the pi electrons and conjugated system of the pi bonding system and uh, just like as benzene and there are various categories like pi pi interaction cation pi or anion pi interaction and polar pi interaction pi pi interaction is associated with interaction between the pi orbitals or molecular systems the high polarizability of aromatic electronic system leads to dispersive interactions for this second effect and it plays a major role for interaction of nuclear bases as for example in dna a benzene ring with its fully conjugated pi cloud interact with two major rings and one minor ring with a neighboring benzene ring through a pi pi interaction releasing the energy nearly 2 to 3 kilocalorie per mole the sandwich form is less stable due to the high electrostatic repulsion for the pi electron here the three type of interaction is shown in the picture and cation pi and anion pi interaction are almost similar cation pi interaction involves the positive charge of cation interacting with the pi cloud of a molecule this is surprisingly strong sometimes more than hydrogen bonding so as for example we can say about the sodium ion can easily sit atop the pi cloud of benzene here is some information about this cation pi and anion pi interaction now we come to polar pi interaction this involves molecules of permanent dipoles like water interacting with the quadruple moment of a pi system it is not as strong as the previously mentioned systems they are involved in protein folding and crystallinity of solid containing both hydrogen and pi the effect is desired for non non covalent or non polar molecules to divide aqueous solution in order to separate from water this leads to minimum exposed area of the non polar molecule to polar one that is making droplets in aggregate form in the important it is important in biochemistry and in this case this is seen when various oils or waters are mixed and actually it is not specific interaction but a function of entropy now we come to the point of applications Firstly, we come to drug design. Most pharmaceutical 
drugs elicit a physiological response by binding to enzymes or receptors, which is followed like the lock and key model in duplex DNA, y set fork structure, four-way junctions of less common nucleic acid, this is seen. Actually, the protein folding involves also the non-covalent bondings. From the primary structure of protein to the tertiary or quaternary structure, we go through all the process of non-covalent interactions. The first five milliseconds of folding are primarily dependent on Van der Waals forces, whereby the protein folds so as to orient non-polar non amino acids in the interior of the globular protein, while more polar amino acid residues are exposed to aqueous solvent. This phase is known as hydrophobic collapse. When non-polar and non-covalent interaction exclude water from the interior of the developing 3D protein structure. After this initial stage, which is called as burst phase, between five to 1,000 milliseconds, three-dimensional structures of proteins are made. And these are known as secondary or tertiary structures, which are stabilized by formation of hydrogen bonds in addition to disulfide bond. Actually, the disulfide bridges or bonds are covalent linkage. Here, a single tertiary protein structure can assemble to form quaternary structures involving relatively strong non-covalent interactions, such as hydrogen bonds. Some cofactors use non-covalent interaction, such as hydrogen bonding, electrostatic interaction, to be attached with proteins. Now, boiling point. This is stronger non-covalent effect. And stronger non-covalent effect rises the boiling point of a substance. In room temperature, water, HF, ammonia are liquid and not gaseous substances. Here, this is information about the boiling point against non-covalent interaction, where sodium N-butoxide shows the boiling point nearly 260 degrees Celsius, where the iodine interaction is active. But in case of N-butanol, the boiling point is nearly 117 degrees Celsius, where the hydrogen bonding is active, and so on. Now, bio biopolymers. This is actually the formation of polymerization process, and through non-covalent interaction, we can polymerize a poly monomer, and uh, this can deal with the uh, formation of biopolymers. In case of DNA formation, from the central dogma of molecular biology, we can describe the biopolymerization process. Here, where spider wave and polysaccharides are also biopolymers. One of the uh, synthesis of bio, um, polysaccharide here is uh, shown. And now this is DNA molecule where the biopolymerization is involved by showing the non-covalency and the interactions, various type of interactions actually here is present in this picture. So therefore, there are so many applications for non-covalent interaction in our daily life. Here, only just some are shown and discussed. So therefore, thank you. OK, thank you very much. If anybody have any questions? OK, if not, uh, let's thanks to uh, both of our paper presenters for their nice presentation. Now uh, it's time to give a validation and board of thanks. Uh, since in this one day international seminar, we have listened to three eminent speakers who have given a lot of time from their busy schedule and talked to us about various aspects of this particular topic where this non-covalent interactions or weak interaction leads to various application in different uh, fields for example in the materials in biological system even in the small molecular section so now i will request our secretary of this organizing committee dr prithish kumar jana to provide uh, word of thanks as well as validation dr prithish kumar jana please
हेलो हमारे ऑडिबल सुन रहे यस ऑडिबल ओके गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबॉडी एज ऑल गुड थिंग्स कम टू एन एंड इन लाइफ सो इज द वेबिनार वी आर ऑलमोस्ट एट द भार्ज ऑफ दिस वेबिनार ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ बाजकुल मिलोनी महाविद्यालय आई टेक दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर वैलिडिक्टरी स्पीच एंड टू प्रपोज वोट ऑफ थैंक्स टू दोज we have directly and indirectly contributed to this web webinar on non covalent interactions basics and applications organized by department of chemistry in collaboration with iqsc of this college at the outset i thank our chief guest and eminent resource persons uh, dr binoy krishna saha dr kim and Dr. Obik Mukhopadhyay, Dr. Binoy Krishna Saha from Pondicherry University, has described on intermolecular forces like dipole-dipole interaction, dipole-induced dipole interaction, induced dipole-induced dipole interaction, tetral bond, acoustic bond, uh, chalcogen bond, halogen bond, and different types of interaction like pi pi interaction, pi pi star interaction. uh m pi m pi interaction etc professor kim uh, talked about uh, metal organic framework where non covalent interaction plays a significant role and uh, he applied this metal organic framework in uh, carbon dioxide carbon monoxide separation water inclusion etc dr obik mukhopadhyay from uk uh, nicely discussed about the role of non covalent interaction in biological inter systems uh, where he showed uh, the non covalent interaction plays a significant role in uh, dna structure vaccine development molecular recognition and docking studies so uh, we are really enlightened with uh, their knowledge and we really enjoyed it and for this we uh, again uh, thank them Uh, we are also thankful to our uh, honorable president for his motivation i would like to thank our respected chairman as well as uh, teacher in charge dr pijush kanti dondopat for his enthusiastic support a special thanks to the organizing committee teaching and non teaching staff for their huge support and uh, coordination we also thank our advisory committee for their valuable suggestions and finally our heartfelt thanks to our students and other persons for their active participation throughout the seminar so with these warm words and a kind message uh, we move to the end of today's seminar thank you thank you pritish babu for your uh, valuable validation Uh, with this validation i declare formally the end of this one day international seminar on non covalent interactions is basic and application i hope all of you have enjoyed and thank you very much for your kind participation and i'll just inform that uh, a feedback form link is given in our whatsapp group so please fill up the feedback uh, form by tomorrow so carefully fill up that one because depending upon your spelling name on written on their institutional name and email id will make your or will send you the certificate so i'll request all of you to carefully fill up the feedback form given in our whatsapp group of this seminar so thank you very much for your kind attention and participation in this seminar so i formally declare the end of this seminar thank you very much